So guys, Tenubu has finally been exposed. All the money they said they've been allocating to state governors are all having political undertone attached to them. Take a look at this video. So as far as I'm concerned, what the government have been doing all these years is actually giving political money to their political cronies. As simple as that. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, most of these people that this money get to, what they do is that they use it as settlement for people that voted for them. Are you seeing that? That's a very big problem. Now, monies that are meant for people, you got to look for people that uh, probably voted for you or are working with you or have political affiliation. We can't do that. We can't continue that way. And this part, I was excited when I heard that Mr. President actually set up this uh, whole stuff um, uh, with uh, Mr. Badamosi, the, the CEO, and the rest of it. I was excited, but there needs to be integrity. In this particular, in this particular one, they want to do integrity, and that integrity will be based on number one, data, data, data. Without data, forget about it. I mean, people just keep throwing figures in the air. We need to go down, the poor of the poor of the poor, to the local government area, to the councillors and all. I will actually advise that this time around, if we can employ the services of private organisation private organization, not just government-driven organization, to get the right data in this local government area. You see what's going on right now? There's uproar everywhere. I know even Mr. President, even the governors, everybody is just wearing a body and feeling cool, but they are bothered. That's the truth. And if they don't want to be bothered anymore, they need to trickle down these things to the right places. Exposing Tinubu's latest propaganda with receipt. Tinubu's latest propaganda is to manipulate you into shifting the blame to governors. Tinubu wants you to leave him alone and start disturbing your governors. I'll show you how they are executing this propaganda. And secondly, and more importantly, why holding your governor will not solve your problem. It is Tinubu that you need to hold and press his neck. He's the only one that can solve your problem. Hi, my name is Mackay. Friends call me Big Mac. Now, I decided to be making videos like this because I noticed that a lot of our financial, economic, and political analysts, they use big, big grammar, and that essentially cuts off majority of Nigerians from joining in conversations like this. And I believe everybody should join in conversations like this. You're welcome. Before I continue, you remember this guy, right? You remember this guy and what they say he did. Okay, let's keep that aside. We're going to come back to that. You see, Tinubu essentially wants state governors to be feeling the heat rather than him. So first thing they did, they started with the social engineering. It's just a concept whereby... In this case, the government is just trying to manipulate you and dictate what you should be angry about and what you should be and who you should be angry about. So they usually do this in, in connivance with the media. So they, they 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 give it to blogs. So that's what they have done here. They give it to this blog, and this blog posted FG releases 570 billion naira grant to states over hunger and hardship. Within four hours after posting this, this same blog posted three articles relating to this and the plan is simple to just dictate what conversation you should be having they want you to be talking about governors look at what they did next article was for your attention federal allocation to states for july 2024 so they want you to know how much your state governor gets got in july so that you go and hold him next one is the san francisco government reportedly budgets 19.3 billion to purchase kitchen equipment in 2024 6.1 billion for public schools they want you to start talking about governors. Then, the next one, who is the best performing governor in Nigeria? <laughs> they want conversation around governors so bad, so that you leave Tinubu alone. That's just it. Now, it's important to note that, you see that money that they say that they gave to governors? It may as well be a lie, because I remember in February, they came out and said that they gave governors extra $30 billion to support hardship. Sheyi Makinde is the governor of Oyo. He came out to deny it and say they didn't receive such money. So this government is capable of lying that they gave governor what they didn't give governors. Now that aside, coming to the part of holding governors to account, right? I believe yet yeah, some of them steal your money and you should be interested in how they spend your money. But I have to be very honest with you. There is very little governors can do for you. Governors cannot end economic hardship. Governors can only support governors can just like palliative and you know like the, the, our problem is that we think we're going to survive on palliative forever every time they are sharing rice they shared rice since 1990s they're still sharing rice to show you that it's not a solution it's not a permanent solution we need to find permanent solution and governors don't have permanent solution governors are like first aid 
when you get injured you get a first aid before going to treat before going for permanent cure governors are first aid tinubu is permanent cure remember no matter how many times you get first aid your injury won't heal until you go for permanent cure so you need to hold tinubu is the permanent cure you are poor because your economy is poor your economy is poor because your currency the naira is weak and state governors are not responsible for weakening or making the naira strong it's only the federal government which is tinubu there are two major policies responsible for making sure that your naira is either weak or strong physical and monetary policies now when they speak this grammar physical and monetary you think it's one big thing no physical let's start with the physical policies it's just the way government try to generate wealth for you and of course the way they try to spend it are they doing a good job in that regard no and i have proof let's start with how they try to make money for us how they try to generate wealth production you know oil is one of our major sources of revenue now let's look at this report nigeria continues to lose 400,000 barrels of oil daily to criminals so essentially that's about four million dollars every day that we lose if you multiply it by 365 you understand how much we are losing because government cannot protect the oil in fact you know that you cannot steal oil ordinary people can steal it before oil is stolen government must be involved so they are not even making enough money for us they are allowing it to be stolen right now let's look at how they are spending the money remember they are not making enough now let's look at how they are spending the money parliament pressures to be able to buy two new aircraft 160 billion naira suv for lawmakers nigeria's president approved spending millions on presidential yacht and suvs for lawmakers now you're not making enough look at how you are spending it imagine you are a businessman and you are not making enough money from your business and you are spending more than you're making what do you think is going to happen you're going to go bankrupt that is exactly what is happening to our naira now let's move to the monetary policy this is just how they try to control and regulate the naira the paper you're seeing so that we don't have too much in circulation which is not good for us hmm? Mm -hmm, because of inflation but are they doing a good job doing that no with proof buhari wasted 23 trillion naira tinubu printed 7.8 trillion naira in seven months still borrows you see this money that they print they print it without production to back it up and who do you think is going to suffer us we're going to suffer it suffer it through inflation you see they print this money it's like doing cho cho, -cho with no workings right now in addition to that they, they they create loopholes where their friends make money without adding a single production to the system what do you think is going to happen inflation our naira will keep getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker so that after your governor gives you their whole money that they give to your governor when you come to the market to meet the new economy you find out that that value the value of that naira is worthless so no matter the governors nothing there is nothing they can do they can they can the permanent solution is the federal government so no matter how you can hold your governor account from now to tomorrow from now to 100 years nothing is going to change imagine before you were buying bag of rice for thirty thousand naira. now it's not eighty thousand naira. so imagine they, they they have given your governor money to support you and your governor decides to share 30k to everybody in the state to support and buy rice if you come to the market with now sixty thousand naira, you still can't afford to buy it so wouldn't it be better for the people at the top who are weakening the naira not to do it so that that your thirty thousand naira will still maintain the same value so that when you go to the market you can buy it 30k and you wouldn't need your state governor to give you because now they are giving you and it's still not enough now let's bring back this guy <laughs> you see the same federal government that is telling you to hold governors to account they are the ones responsible for the efcc right efcc is responsible for going after guys like this after they have stolen money in office when they leave office right now ask them why they have not arrested this guy ask them and then they want us to hold them to account when they themselves cannot even hold them to account you see tinubu is not ready to do anything for nigerians and if you like giving 100 years nothing is going to get better 
it's all lies and propaganda and i'm always here to boss them one by one and if you love watching video so guys the truth remains that this government has lost it they've lost direction they've lost you know that relationship with the people and now they are tending to you know joining the heads of protesters with those of the governors nigerians are asking this government this government to be accountable they should be accountable they told us that subsidy is gone now all the money they've saved from subsidy where are those money only for them to come out to tell Nigerians that they've been allocating money to state governors and all that. And like you've heard this man rightly said, he has come out to expose them, telling the world that this money that they do give to state governors are politically attached, you know, they are politically inclined. I mean, political attachment are all around this money. Tinubu is not just giving governors this amount of money because he wants to be kind or he wants the people to get the benefits. After all, since the governors receive this money, did they even bother to know what the governors have done with it? If not for the cry of the youths who have come out to protest, nobody would have known that this amount of money have been going to the hands of the, the governors. And still, poverty trickles down, down to the local government. I mean, people at the, at the grassroots level are suffering in Nigeria. And these people only think about their political future. He is sharing this money ahead of 2027. He's, he wants to win the hearts of the APC governors the more. And for those of them who are on the, in the opposition, he wants them to come over. Because when you come over, you tend to have more benefits from the government. The government tends to hear from you, tends to listen to you, tends to attend to some of your needs that you might bring up, like having government projects or government presence in your state and all that. These are some of the things they keep doing, leaving Nigerians poor. These people have so much sucked this country to the point that this country is now crying. And that is what has led to the protests you have seen. In fact, anything higher than hardship is what's currently going on right now, where the young people can't even afford to feed and all. And the truth is this, it's just like uh, my uh, friend out there said and all, that if these uh, ministry and all, if they've been functional, I'm sure probably will not be where we are right now. Because every day you come out on TV, you hear that the government is giving this to state, giving that to state and the rest of it, and it does not trickle down. Now, the big problem here is this, is that the federal government, they are not going about it the right way. They are not working with the right sets of people. And that's why it's like that. There are NGOs that are actually doing this thing with their personal funds. So, as far as I'm concerned, what the government are doing all these years is actually giving political money to their political cronies. As simple as that. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, most of these people that this money gets to, what they do is that they use it as settlement for people that voted for them. Are you seeing that? That's a very big problem. Now, monies that are meant for people, you got to look for people that uh, probably voted for you or are working with you or have political affiliation. We can't do that. We can't continue that way. And this particular, I was excited when I heard that Mr. President actually set up this uh, whole stuff um, uh, with uh, Mr. Badamosi, the, the CEO, and the rest of it. I was excited, but there needs to be integrity in this particular, in this particular one they want to do. Integrity. And that integrity will be based on, number one, data. 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 Without data, forget about it. I mean, people just keep throwing figures in the air. We need to go down, the poor of the poor of the poor, to the local government area, to the councillors and all. I will actually advise that this time around, if we can employ the services of private organization, private organization, not just government-driven organization, to get the right data in this local government area. You see what's going on right now? There's uproar everywhere. I know even Mr. President, even the governors, everybody is just wearing our body and feeling cool, but they are bothered. That's the truth. And if they don't want to be bothered anymore, they need to trickle down these things to the right places in the country. Let's not play politics anymore with things that have to do with life for people. Whether people are in PDP, in APC, in Labour, RUPP, whatever P or whatever, nobody should play politics because hunger is very dangerous. And hunger is something that can make a man do what he or she does not want to do. So let it be a change this time around. Well, that's I think that's the, that's the whole essence while we're here. And I, I, I can feel your 
anger already, which is this is hardly you. And uh, for you to speak like this, it means uh, we really need to get down to basics. So uh, uh, I come back to Andrew. Andrew, some of the key concerns will be that of coordination. Uh, how do they ultimately coordinate uh, between the agencies, uh, ministries, and uh, agencies like yourself to ensure that first they are identified and secondly it gets to these people so identified. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, we have experienced the coordination challenge even within government. So um, the homegrown school feeding program is a typical example. So you have the Ministry of Agri, the Budget Office, um, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health. So all of them are involved in it. But in terms of coordination, once a commissioner is responsible for it, in the state, I'm, thinking, I'm picking a state for instance, a commissioner is responsible for it and the commissioner calls for a meeting. Other commissioners are like, why would a commissioner invite me? We are all co-commissioners and you've had that poor coordination across the board. And we tend to, we, we got more results when the program was in the vice president's office. So if the vice president calls for a meeting, everyone has got to engage. Unfortunately, we don't know where the, um, for instance, the homegrown school feeding program is going to sit. Is it going to still sit in the Ministry of Humanitarian? That was part of the argument or the debate uh, for the social investment program generally. Is it going to be moved to the budget office? Is it going to be moved to Ministry of Finance? Or is it going to be so? For us, if you go to where there will be that authority, once the person speaks, all the all the coordinating ministers that are involved in it would align. I think that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing is citizens have got to be involved in this. So uh, citizens from citizens, you've got civil society organization. So civil society organization have got to be involved in this. There is no way you will run this program successfully without having citizens being able to play that role of third party monitoring. Right. So beyond government monitoring themselves, but we've got to have civil society organizations, how they are paid, how they are engaged. Of course, that will be what other organizations will do for organizations like us. We are not action is not interested in getting paid by government. We are able to engage and coordinate citizens to group to be able to monitor the program and get clear evidence. We have clear results. Let me give you one example before I, I stop this. So when we were in monitoring the program, there was a, there's a group called the political monitors. Political monitors emerge from the National Assembly. National Assembly like, okay, how can this budget pass and where our constituents are not involved? And they had to find a middle way of engaging or settling them. And they created political monitors. Right. Guess what? They were not involved in any monitoring, but they were paid every month just to have that political settlement. So those are the kind of things we need to avoid, involve, avoiding political involvement and interference in a program like this. Or else, right. we'll come back, and come back to these same um, Ed Band governors that we're currently running today. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, we have to end it here. One of the other concerns... The youths of this country are hungry. And not just that they are hungry, they are equally angry. People are angry considering the way that this government is managing the resources of this country. Everything is centered around politics. Everything they do is triggered by politics. No more pure leadership. No more true leadership. No more being a patriotic leader in a country like this. Anything they do is geared towards, you know, getting political benefits and not for the people. And that is why we keep saying, why is it that Nigeria tend not to have luck when it comes to getting good leaders? Each time people come into power, they come in with their own level of blunder and begin to com commit it without minding the reaction from the people. Because for them, who will talk? Who will do anything? Who will act against us? And that is why this blunder has continued, you know? This criminality, like people will always say criminality in Nigeria, that is why this criminality has continued. So... The exercise protesters, one of the things they've demanded is the court of governance and also removal of wealth subsidy because we don't get the benefit. They told us they removed wealth subsidy. Okay, you've removed it. You are saving some amount of money. Why not tell us what you are doing with the money you are saving? Now, they are demanding for the removal of wealth subsidy only, I mean, for wealth subsidy to be restored only for this government to come to start telling Nigerians that they've been allocating the money they got from subsidy, you know, to state government 
on what basis on what basis and that's why i say everything about this country is politically inclined this government cannot give any state government a dime without any political attachment to it and that is why this country keeps failing and this government these governors will take this money down to their state they will not even make it public that this is what they receive this this is how they are using it and this is how they are what they are doing with it they will not want the masses to know and guess what some of them will be using public funds for personal use we saw in Kogi State where the state governor was being, I mean, the past state governor was busy using state funds to pay school fees of his child. That's the extent of the rot in the system. And that is why we must all join our voices to say enough of the excesses of our politicians. I think at this point, we've had enough from them. And that is why we want this country to take a new track. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. What's your take about this federal government releasing money to the state governors who are not even being transparent to the people of Nigeria? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you.